Welcome in, everybody. Welcome to today's story. It's the first day in two weeks without back pain. So I will take a couple of free questions at the end. Don't super chat me. Just wait till the very end and I'll take a couple of quick questions towards the end as well. Things that are top of your mind. So good to see you all. Big thank you as well to the moderators in the chat here. And it is Saturday. It's the weekend. The sun is shining. Everything is good. So let's jump in. Uh, disclaimer, of course, as you guys know, this is never financial advice. It's always edutainment. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, the story today, I'm going to talk about 200-week moving averages, look at a couple of charts, look at one pair, talk about bottoms, talk about year-end targets, talk about some new crypto funds that are in the game, Fidelity, Schwab, etc. talk about Cybertruck news without talking about Cybertruck specifically, but talking about data, talking about the Ethereum proof stake merge, misery index, wallets, and a Patreon member showcased on a top financial journal. Very impressive. What a great day. So super happy. This is the quick market overview. Things are up. Uh, a lot of green on the board, except for BNB. Um, but everything else is pretty much green. Uh, Polkadot, Solana, Dark Green, VeChain, Doge, XRP. Ethereum, after having a big run, isn't as much as some of the other names. And even Bitcoin is outperforming it. But if you look to the bottom left corner here, you see the Bitcoin dominance, 39.57%. According to this chart here, it is under 40%, which is pretty staggering. So let's talk about Bitcoin. Now, we have to watch very carefully. We're coming up to the monthly close. Uh, we have the end of the month uh, coming up real soon. And it's very important to stay above that. It's very important psychologically for investors, too. We are enjoying the second week of a big green candle. You can see for the chart, this is on the weekly. The green line at the bottom is the 200-week moving average, which is actually cut through the 50-day moving average, which is the red line. And the, two, the blue one above is a 200-day moving average. I like to look at these all very careful. Now, a quick reminder, the 200-week moving average is about 22,600. We smashed through that. We are also quite a bit above the 50-day moving average, 21,400. And the 200-day uh, is up around 33,000. So a bit of climbing to go before we get close to the 200-day moving average. But expect us to stay in these ranges as we go forward. Now, let's look at the range of Bitcoin. Here you can see the kind of the zigzag up and down. They put in the bottom and the bottom left hand corner with the finger going bottom, boom, because the topic today is bottoms. We're going to talk a lot about bottoms. And then we're at the very top of this range. It's been zigzagging up. Normally it comes back to earth, but this is persistently staying out like it did around the 18th, 19th of July. So we'll see what happens. Um, it might come crashing back down in the range. But what's very important here to note is the channel is ascending. It's going up and to the right. So that's the big takeaway from this simple little chart here, the range. But we'll see if that zigzag continues as we go forward. I look at it very carefully. And uh, it can be quite lucrative to trade it too. Um, now, Bitcoin short ETF launched June 21st. This is going back over a month. And uh, the reason I bring this up is they launch the Bitcoin short ETF uh, after Beto, the Simbling product. Don't buy either. They're both crap. You bleed out real fast. If ever you want to hold them, don't hold them for more than three days or so because of different wastage effects. But this is so poetic from Will Clemente. He said, it is truly poetic that the short Bitcoin ETF launched within three days of the bottom of the market. So talking about bottoms, I thought that was pertinent to share from Will and it is poetic. Nice one, sir. Uh, let's talk about Bitcoin a little bit more with Fidelity. This just in banking giant Fidelity says Bitcoin is the only cryptocurrency it plans to offer in 401k products per Barron's. Uh, Barron's has been putting out some pretty good stuff lately. So shout out to them as well. But uh, that was disappointing to some. It's like, oh, no, what about our shit coins? Well, no, they're not going to be included. And that is good. Despite that, though, I think uh, people like Elizabeth Warren are still very against Fidelity doing this because it's a disservice to people who have their retirement dreams pinned in a 401k. I'll be talking more about 401ks and retirement funds tomorrow in the Q&A. So stay tuned for that as well. Uh, now, in other news as well, Schwab is to launch their crypto ETF. 
and it's going to be their first crypto linked ETF. They have a bunch of others and they're going to be started trading, I think, around the third or fourth, fourth of August, I think. And uh, it's going to be called the Schwab Crypto Thematic ETF, STCE, I think is the ticker. Uh, the good thing about it is that it's a very, very small percentage fee, 0.3%. And the interesting thing about it as well, it won't be investing directly in things like altcoins and Bitcoin, but it'll be investing in companies that are involved in crypto. Uh, I don't know what the list is yet, but I'm assuming if they have half a brain, it'll be MicroStrategy, it'll be Square, it'll be top miners like CleanSpark and Hut, uh, Core Scientific, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, maybe a couple of brokerage services too, maybe some, I don't know, FTX. Who knows what goes in there, but we'll track that carefully and we'll see if it actually makes sense to have that if it is the only thing you can access from your retirement accounts that might make sense. Now, switching gears back to ETH, back to the 200-week moving average, the difference between this and the Bitcoin chart is you can see ETH has been enjoying three weeks of big, fat, green candles. And uh, it is well above the 200-week moving average, which is at 1,200. And Ethereum is... <laughs> banging on the door of 1600 real soon also smashed through the 50 day moving average of about 1250 so again nothing but strength here but if you just for that perspective of where we've come from in a very short window of time since november all the way down from about 4800 we thought we were going to hit 5000 we missed and since then the trend has been down and nasty but as always, everything mean reverts, and we are well, well below that mean. In fact, uh, the blue line there, 200 moving, average is about 2,400, and I expect that could be a top before September 19th. But again, we could be range-bound too. It looks like it's losing a bit of steam. Now, other things that are very bullish for Ethereum is the Ethereum exchange outflow. It's at a 13-month high because of the proof-of-stake merge. I think uh, the exact number is about 30,000 ETH fled the system, fled exchanges. And that is the last time it did that, I think was, uh, I can't remember exactly, but the last time there was such a big outflow, it was sometime May or June, 2021. So this is big. Again, the less crypto on exchanges, the more supply crunch and the more price goes up for the time being. Let's talk about a pair. This one is also very interesting. And I always talk about how Certain alts run. It was an Ethereum-led run for the last three weeks, but now other ones are catching up. So what happens is the top names get the limelight first. People buzz into them. They buy them. They go up. And then they turn around and look over their shoulder and say, oh, hang on a second. This one hasn't run yet. Hmm, this pair isn't where it needs to be. So here you can see the Sol ETH pair. I look at it a lot. I believe it'll shoot back to 0 0.03 as we go uh Go forward, and in fact, uh, Sol is up ten percent today, while ETH is basically up one or two percent. So it's already completely outperforming, and this is why we look at pairs a lot. Now let's talk about bottoms and where we are. I did touch on this the other day. Um, Mohammed El Arian, a big fan of his, he believes the crypto winter is behind us. This was the beginning of the bottom callers, apart from me a month ago. I checked my previous videos that call the bottom. But uh, risk on rally, we have all the journals coming in. Not only is it equity markets, but crypto markets join risk on rally on mixed Fed and FOMC signals. I wouldn't say they were mixed. I said they were extremely bullish. And as I've been talking about as well, for months is the Fed are boxed in. So they can't raise rates to infinity. It's simple math. Anyway, uh, the dollar was getting stronger as well. Um, ahead of the rate hike, and now the Dixie has fallen too. So lots of other good stuff uh, going on as well. Now, Financial Times came out and said, ooh, U.S. stocks have rebounded from a very tough first half of the year, but U.S. stocks spring higher to close at the best month since 2020. Um, obviously, the expectations for interest rate rises and upbeat earnings for several big tech companies helped a lot. S&P, uh, I think it rent up over 9% in July. It's the biggest gain since, again, November 2020. And uh, the blue chip stock gauge is bolstered by better than expected earnings. People were expecting big tech earnings to be smashed by the recession. They were not. Good news for that. And Wall Street Journal, they chimed in as well, uh, repeating the same thing. So no matter, no matter what newspaper you pulled up, it was all like, 
Ooh, best month ever. Oh, it's gone. Oh, things have bottomed. Things are back. But this is probably after El Arian, Mama Del Arian. This is probably the most uh, important thing. Tom Lee. He said clearly on CNBC, the bottom is in. Leading indicator shows CPI will be under 2% in six months, says Fundstrat's Tom Lee. It's not all he said, too, but uh, he is a big crypto Bitcoin bull as well as uh, equities. He looks at them both. So first thing I'll tackle is the first thing he said, which is kind of interesting. He said we will be at 2% in six months. Uh I don't think so, Tom. I respect you very much, but I do not believe that's the case. If you look at shadow stats from 1980, this is kind of what the CPI would have been if they didn't cook the numbers, cook the books, whatever you want to say, with all these different modifiers to keep it artificially suppressed. Obviously, because the debt is so high, I believe the government needs to inflate its way out of debt. And that's the quickest and easiest way to do it secretly so people don't know. So they publish these numbers that are the red line in this chart, which is the fake CPI. And the SGS is the blue line, and this is the true number from shadowstats.com. Check it out yourselves. But here you can see the last time we got close to a real 2% inflation was in 1987, over 35 years ago. And there's a lot of people in the channel watching this that weren't even alive when this happened. And we didn't even get close to 2%. It was about 3%. So that's where we are. And that is the reality. So Tom, nope. 2% not going to happen. But you know what? I'm sure the Fed and the government will change things around with the CPI, just like they changed Wikipedia definition of recession yesterday. Uh, now, let's talk about his other thing that he did say that I found very striking. He believes the S&P 500 could get to 4,800 by year end. That will take us back exactly to its all-time high. So I added the yellow bar in the top right corner is his expectation. Uh, the bottom I said on the 18th of June, the S&P 500 probably bottomed at 3,600. And my target for year end is about 4,600. So I'm not as high as him, but I do believe we can easily get to 4,600 by December, January, depending on what happens in the overall macro situation. Yes, the macro situation is horrible. Yes, we're in a recession. Yes, there's a war going on. Yes, consumer confidence is shot. Yes, retail inventories are really, really high. Whole bunch of crap. But remember, stock markets can go up in recessions and do go up in recessions. So don't let the macro gray clouds keep you out of the market. Now, uh, this is another one too regarding Bitcoin. Bitcoin, not only like the stock market, had the best month since 2021. And Bitcoin rose 19% in July. So another one uh, from Matt DeSalvo. I think that was in Decrypt or Cointelegraph or one of these magazines. I can't remember. Um, now, remember though as well, a lot of people think, oh, but you know, retail investors, they're not buying in. Uh, they don't have confidence yet because I read that on Twitter and all of Twitter says we're going to 12,000 or 13,000 and the bottom isn't in. But look who is buying, okay? This is not a retail game, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, watch the big money, watch the smart money, Watch where the big money flows. So this is, I've calculated roughly back of the napkin, don't hold me to this, but about 82% of all the money since the beginning of the year has gone in. And the people that are stacking are the people with the $10,000 to $100,000 Bitcoin wallets, okay? Now, since uh, by my calculations, 21 have been added since the downturn, since the beginning of the year. The average holding within these wallets is about 30,000, I estimate. So 21 times 30,000 is nearly, say, 650,000 Bitcoin. That is nearly 5% of all Bitcoin is how much. And that's assuming only 14 million Bitcoin exists because so much is lost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So these guys have stacked 5% of all Bitcoin. Each time a holder, picks up a wallet, adds 30,000 Bitcoin to it. You don't even notice it. It happens over the counter. But that denies 30,000 individual retail investors from ever being a whole coiner. Until, of course, maybe they sell or whatever. So that's important to note, everybody. So just watch what these guys are doing. Do people on Twitter know more than the people with more than 10,000 Bitcoin? That remains to be seen. So just some information. Now, there are a lot of people as well. They're waiting until the crypto market bottoms. This is a meme. I saw somewhere on Twitter, I thought it was worth sharing. Sometimes it's important not to wait, but to layer in hard 
when you have that bottom. Again, it is a generational buying opportunity. No ifs, ands, or buts. Look at anything else. And I think it is highly, highly unlikely, and I've been saying for months now, that we're going to see 17K again. Very unlikely. Unless, of course, we have the huge black swan event or something really, really bad happens. In the meantime, my advice is probably don't wait. Now, in terms of bad news, there is the U.S. misery index. And uh, as I've been talking a lot about for a while, the blue line is the inflation number. The misery index is the combination of high inflation, high unemployment. But the pink line, the unemployment number, hasn't spiked yet. But look at that. It's beginning to creep, expected to creep up in 2023. Uh, now, this is an expectation a forecast from Bloomberg and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Now, remember, what this means is the misery is very, very high. This would also be miserable for Biden and the Democrats to get elected, and it's estimated they could lose 30 seats in November. So they got to fix something fast to bring that misery index down. But watch the pink line. As I'm talking about, this is from Charlie Bilello. After hitting a record low in April, uh, the four-week average of initial jobless claims, which is unemployment, new unemployment filings, has increased by 80,000, which is about 46% to its highest level of the year. This is important because this is a leading indicator of the jobs market with claims typically rising in advance of the unemployment rate. It's coming. That pink line is going to go up. No ifs, ands, or buts. Everybody's hire on hiring freezes. People are quitting their jobs. These jobs are not being replaced. And of course, a lot of people left the workforce and a lot of people are getting laid off as well across all industries. Now, this was also got my attention. It's not really part of the theme here, but I thought it was kind of fascinating for a couple of reasons. One, um, this is from Bloomberg. Crypto wallet maker Ledger seeks new funding at a higher valuation. And the stunning thing about this is uh, they raised uh, $380 million in June 2021, which is like a year ago, $380 million to build hardware wallets at a valuation of more than $1.5 billion. Now they're looking to raise more money, uh, another $100 million at a higher valuation. But what was really interesting as well for me is they have actually sold over 3 million wallets so far. So think of that. I think of all the wallet makers, Ledger, Trezor, et cetera, et cetera. There must be tens and tens of millions of wallets out there. And that shows you, not your keys. And especially now, never before has there been a better time to be in the wallet business because people don't trust exchanges anymore. Forget CFI. Anyhow, uh, that was important. So make, make, make sure you get one, but not a Ledger or anything. I don't promote any wallets, but uh, check out what's going on. And this one as well, um, reintroducing Charlie Bellello again. I added this logo to uh, one of his graphics he had. And this is the best selling cars across the United States. And I was stunned by this because the top three selling vehicles are all trucks. They are the F Series, Silverado, and Ram. All of these things get about 10 to 14 miles per gallon, and gas is expensive, but they're still the top selling cars. The only place in the whole country is California that buys something uh, like a Honda Civic because gas is very expensive here in California. But anyway, um, but eight out of the top 10 are trucks or SUVs. And that is stunning. And the reason why I mention this is because of Tesla. Tesla are coming out with their Cybertruck in summer of 2023. Look at the market for trucks. It is staggering. And the Cybertruck is the most sophisticated, most advanced, most military-like design, exoskeleton, no paint, it's extremely light, extremely strong, extremely powerful, electric, will soon be autonomous, and it has a whole bunch of mind-blowing features, as well as very extended range. So <laughs> I think when this thing comes to market and people who actually traditionally buy trucks, because the first adopters will be people like me who've never had a truck in their life, um, will be amazed by what they see. So this bodes very well for Tesla in 23, 23 and onwards. That's why I'm sharing it. In addition, another piece of good news. This is another gem from Charlie B. Corn and wheat prices are down 30 to 40%. And thank you as well to Sanjay for sharing this with me. Are down 30 to 40% from their recent highs and below the levels they were at before the Russia invaded Ukraine. Bye -bye. And as you know, I covered it before, but Russia and Ukraine signed an agreement to feed the world. Thank 
goodness, or else we were staring down the barrel of 10 million to 100 million people dying of starvation. So now everything is back in business to get the food out there, which is good. Fingers crossed. So hopefully they'll continue and find a way to find peace. And finally, I'm very honored, uh, a proud uh, Patreon member in our community, a valued member, uh, somebody I work closely with as well, was published in a top finance newspaper. Um, he is a big believer in Bitcoin. Not a fan of most cryptoins and cri cryptos and old coins, but uh, he does believe uh, very heavily in Bitcoin and he sees it as a long-term savings method and he thinks that he might one day be able to hand down his Bitcoin holdings to his children. Uh, he also spoke of things like debasement of fiat currency, US dollar over the past 50 years, has robbed people of their work, caused people to artificially prioritize the now over the future, and allowed governments to fund wars, projects, pork bills, etc. under the table without having to directly you know, deal with their own constituents. So congratulations. Very happy. Won't mention any names. Never dox anybody, but uh, great to see as well. So I'm going to do a couple of quick questions because my back is not in pain. So it's been a struggle. So if anybody has any quick questions, fire them my way here. Uh, Darth Mike, the problem with electric vehicle is the batteries aren't very environmentally friendly. Yeah, but they're getting there and they are investing heavily in technology that will be much more recyclable. So watch for that and watch for a lot of companies to pop up in that area as well. And uh, Anthony Dodd, I just want to milk that tastes like regular milk. I, d I don't know what that is. Charles Kincannon, my drug of choice is edutainment. Very good. <laughs> I love that. Um, so Margie K, will we ever be able to borrow on our Bitcoin again? Yes, we will. I do believe, well, there are already uh, ways in a DeFi way without actually sharing your keys to borrow against your crypto and we should actually do a revisit of that. That's a great idea for a video. Um, but yes, what has happened it has been horrific, but it's come to the surface and it'll never be allowed to happen again. So I do envision a future where you can hold on to your keys and you can monitor everything in a transparent way and at the same time get some type of yield on your crypto. No ifs, ands, or buts, but it might be a couple of years before that is really a mature and safe and stable industry. Um, Elmar D, hi James, even if bottom is in, do you expect a retest of it or something like 18.5? I think, uh, Elmar, I think it's highly unlikely we'll get back to that level. I'm watching a lot of the on-chain data, I know a lot of people say on-chain is BS, et cetera, but literally every dip is being bought up and the channel is just ascending like I showed in the chart. Um, again, there's just too much buying pressure. And there's so many people have reached out to me saying, hey, I'm waiting for 12K and they will see it go back to 20 and then 21 and then 22 and then 23 and 24. And they're like, did I miss it? And they start uh, getting, you know, kind of like FOMO-like and getting very nervous that they have missed the bottom. So all I can do is, uh, do what I do is like when you see these generational lows and you see the continued adoption and everything else, you know, do a little expected value spreadsheet. Uh, very simple. Let me see. Charles Kincannon, any updates and actions needed for Celsius and Voyager? Um, Voyager, I just read that they rejected the FTX offer, which is kind of sad. I don't know what Voyager has planned. Um, and regarding Celsius, Make sure you take a screenshot of your holdings. Um, send yourself a CSV file. There's a very good um, community on Reddit. Check that out. Some really, really good, helpful people, lawyers, attorneys there, and, and uh, check that out as well. Let me see. Equities from Majestic Fox. Equities need to go down another 40 to 50%. So Majestic Fox, you have to look at historical valuations on that one. If you look at things like Google, Google was at over a decade low in terms of valuation, trading at a PE of 18 <laughs> with growth rates that are faster than they were 10 years ago. So when you look at these historical valuations and you look at the strength of their earnings, even though they are a little bit below expectations, um, Amazon as well. Amazon took a whole bunch of hits, but they were still growing. They had one of the best prime days in a long time. Um, you know, it, it's value. Uh <laughs> Java, <laughs> Java, how are you? Why is everyone scared of 17,000 Bitcoin? I love it. Buying more. Exactly. It's like for people who had the courage and 
you know, I sometimes I talk about when a building is on fire, it takes bravery to run into it. And you see the charts going down like that. You know, it takes a lot of courage, but the people that jumped in and grabbed some, it definitely made sense. Um, let me see. Uh, your ankle. Hey, James, I was wondering if it is possible for Bitcoin to hit the 18K range again. Seems to be a lot of questions. Yes, there are a lot of great clouds, but just look at the equity markets. Look at the traditional markets. Look at the risk on assets. Everything is going up big time. So we'll see. Um, from Santi. I love this quick fire round. What will happen with the mic strategy impairment? Will the stock drop? Uh, I think it'll hit because a lot of people that hold, maybe some people hold or some analysts that look at micro strategy don't really understand the accounting implications of an impairment charge. It's like, it just doesn't matter. It's not the reason you invest in micro strategy. Um, it is literally trading. The market cap of micro strategy, I think I checked on Friday, is equivalent to their Bitcoin holdings. So, um, and they have, they generate a lot of value with their financial jujitsu. So I think it'll come back, but it might be a good time. Uh, what I also look at a lot is the pair, the Bitcoin MicroStrategy pair and find ways to swap between both as well. Clavado Crypto, are you expecting a pullback this weekend? Um, I'm expecting a little bit of a breather. Things like, I, I was looking at, I have this list of the top 100 cryptos. I look at it, it even includes... <laughs> A lot of like scam coins and meme coins, but I, I like watch everything. And uh, there was five names up 10% today, like Solana. And I think Filecoin is up 43%. And I covered Filecoin on Thursday saying, wow, if it gets back to its all-time highs, that would be crazy returns. So I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but uh, some names are really going up very fast right now. It looks like Ethereum is taking a breather. Bitcoin is creeping up there. It's holding tight above that range. Um, I don't know. Uh, sometimes if it is going to be a pullback, it'll happen before 4 p.m., 5 p.m. on Sunday, Pacific time. So whatever time is when you're in. But uh, I'm not sure. I just see a lot of strength. I see a lot of positive news. Like every newspaper you open, everybody's saying, oh, the bottom's in, it's risk on. <laughs> That's why I tried to bring together with the, the theme there. Uh you're in finance. Uh, what do you think? It's not something I ever invested in or something I ever liked, but it's not a bad traditional play, but I think there's better places. Jabba, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And uh, let me see. Uh, Cat with a K. How many ups and downs before it stays up like top 10? Not financial advice. Cat, what do you mean ups and downs for which asset? Um, everything, as you, as you see, as you saw as well, everything kind of zigzags up and down as we as kind of we go forward let me turn this thing off you don't you see that um but we'll see if cat with gave you can respond to exactly what you're talking about and let me know uh oh wow uh pie hunter i'll go ceo left i'll go officially done for um it's funny i never liked algorand uh i think one of the issues was they were so proprietary. You know, we live in an open source world and I think they were kind of proprietary and didn't like the tokenomics or anything else. And uh, I think the Scaramucci guy had a lot of Algorand. It was just, just didn't smell right. And all the data, all the statistics were not good. But I didn't know the CEO left. So that's news to me. Crypto for sake. Thank you so much as well. Uh, oscillates. Yeah, everything pretty much ranges up, ranges down. But the key thing to look at is look at pairs and uh, find out what is run and then find out what's next in line to run because that will run next. So uh, that's kind of what I do. <laughs> St. Juicy's Mooch's biggest holdings. Yes, and his fund, like tons of others, uh, stopped withdrawals because it was just doing really bad. I think I expect perhaps, just assuming, maybe they lent out some crypto or did some funny games like Babel Finance and everybody else. Uh, Damien Art, what is your opinion of Hex? Uh, Damien, with all due respect, do a two-minute Google search. You'll have all your answers there. Um, and, and the fact that the Richard Hart was on Kitcoin the other day is like, oh. Anyway, um, let me see. Cardigan B, has your long-term thesis on Bitcoin changed at all over the past few months? Uh, not at all. Again, Cardigan B, what I love about Bitcoin is it's, absolute hard cap it is 
pretty much already deflationary because people are losing the keys all the time. I also expect that to accelerate with the adoption of people doing their own self-custody. People will screw up. So everybody, make sure you have very good OPSEC in place when you do that. But no, everybody needs to have some Bitcoin. However, I've proven to myself um, equities can be much more lucrative uh, over time. So I like to have a nice balance between not only crypto with some very disruptive crypto like ETH and Sol, but also balance my crypto with disruptive companies like Tesla, Google, etc. That's kind of my play, as you guys know. Hey, Wasim, James, in your recent video, you were also sure the market will run, will turn red after GP. Can you explain what happened? So, Wasim, what I, what I said was, uh, typically, I refer to the past. Every time that the Fed released the numbers and they were in line with expectation, the market rallied. But the next day, the market tanked. The difference this time, and I made a video literally within 20 minutes or 10 minutes of JP's speech because I was blown away. And his words were to the effect of, okay, we've reached stable level. Uh, we believe, you know, we are past peak inflation. And we don't think there's any, like if you read between the lines of what he said, he said basically he doesn't believe they have to keep on hiking rates. And I always said they can never go beyond a Fed funds rate of 3.25 to 3.5%. And they are 75 basis points away from that. And I did many, many models. Check out my video, why the Fed is boxed in. So I think what seemed the reason the market rallied was because the Fed had technically done a pivot before people were expecting I was expecting September for that to happen. It came a month early. So that's why it was kind of special. Desert Dog. <laughs> ben Borgia. Oh. Oh, no. Somebody broke their leg. Well, the Tesla wheel fell off on the freeway. Well, oh, no. That's terrible to hear. Um, anyway. Richard Stevens. What will the collapse of the Chinese economy have overall in crypto, in your opinion? And uh, not much. Uh, the Chinese are kind of blocked heavily from trading in crypto, and I do believe the Chinese government will print their sell themselves to safety and bail out Evergrande and all the property developers. Uh, I think the money printers are forecasted to print about another fourteen percent of their money supply in the next twelve months. So that's we'll see. Um, you should check into the algo scenario and report it back to the community. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I, as you guys know, I, I don't follow Algorand. I never liked it. Uh, and now we have Ryan. Hex is not a scam. Yeah, he takes... Uh, I'm not even going to get entertained in that question. Okay? You guys do what you want with your money. <laughs> I don't care. But, uh, oh no. Shades of Yoga. Sorry you sprained your ankle. Um, I want to print myself to safety. That sounds awesome. Yeah, <laughs> some people said as well. Why doesn't the government just print money and buy Bitcoin with it? Well, I would devalue the uh, dollar in a big way. Um, so Victor Lim, I can't give financial advice regarding your question, but uh, my temperature has turned on grayscale. They keep on getting rejected by the SEC, which tells me there might be some skeleton in the closet. I don't know, but I think uh, MicroStrategy after earnings could be a little bit more interesting. And we've seen MicroStrategy shoot up to 350 as well. So we'll see. Um, okay, I don't know about Algorand. I don't follow it. Uh, again, The yeah, exactly, uh, uh, irrational. Richard Hart is not allowed in the United States. It's not even his real name. Yes, he's changed his name many times. Just do your own research, everybody, and be careful out there. You know, have your money in very, very safe blue chips with trusted management teams. Wixie Snipes. Uh, pure BTC, raw, uncut, please. Yes. As I always said last year, pure form is always the best. Um, let me see. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thoughts on Phantom. Uh, JJ, it's an interesting project, uh, but the growth is not quite there. I will be doing an update on daily active users for all the top chains. So, uh, yeah, uh, Luis Medina, check out my video uh, from Thursday. I cover Hedera. And also check out the research from Masari. All your answers are there. Uh, let me see. 
Chris Williams, yes, I will, for sure. I'm going to do a, a bunch of that. I've also been revising a lot of my price predictions. Uh, I have, and this is from Prince Philip, the OG. Yes, I have heard of Sovereign. Any thoughts? It's still too small at this stage. Not adopted enough. Uh, and St. Jude needs us. Very valid point. Why buy junk when there's so much quality out there? Follow the assets that are disrupting the world. Don't buy a company that pretends to be a Tesla or a crypto that pretends to do other things. I'm not going to mention any names, okay? So, yeah, uh, Chaotic T. Most YouTubers are bearish calling for ten to 13,000 Bitcoin. Follow the herd. No, thank you. <laughs> First thing you learn is blaze your own trail, everybody. Do your own research. Uh, don't follow the herd. All right. Uh, American Realist. Bora Bora, for sure. Um, Fiji, it would be great to play golf there one day. I'm going to do one more question. Uh, who will run more by Christmas, Bitcoin or Tesla? Uh, it's a simple one, Jason. What is, what is more likely to double from where it is now? And the answer is Bitcoin. So Bitcoin to 50K before Tesla gets to 16, 1700. Uh, Easy Bitcoin. Not saying either will do that, but I'm just saying uh, Bitcoin will outperform. But Ethereum will also outperform Bitcoin. And I also believe Solana will outperform Ethereum. So, but again, the more performance you get, the more you go out on the risk curve, and that is dangerous as well. Um, best free movies. I actually covered Filecoin as well on Thursday. I've never actually looked into it. I, I tend not to like these kind of service businesses. I prefer the picks and shovels, kind of like a a gold rush analogy. And with that, everybody, thank you so much. Suzaba, thank you so much too. Uh, chronic pain is no fun. So anybody out there who has chronic pain, I feel for you. Okay. But uh, again, take care of yourselves. Eat well, eat healthy, get rest. And I'll see you all tomorrow for Q&A right about this time. So thank you all for being here. Smash the likes and subscribe if you haven't. I'm starting to ask for that. Uh, so big thanks, everybody. Appreciate you all.